All right, all right, party people. <clears throat> Just sitting here chilling. Mm hmm. Sorry. Just texting with the wife real quick. She down there. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. yeah. What's going on? What's going on, Prince? Prince. Yeah, I got still playing with that music, trying to get the. <laughs> the volume right on it. Don't want it to be too loud. Coke was saying I had it up too loud. And was a trip. Like I can't even hear it now. But that's all right. We good. We good. All right. All right. Make sure y'all hit the like button. What's going on, Brian? Good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Yep. Had to make sure the microphone was off mute. Matter of fact, I forgot to check my levels. Check one, check one. All right. <clears throat> all right, all right. I got my water. Got my tea. Matter of fact, let me take that off so it can start cooling down some. Worst thing to have is be trying to drink some tea and it burns you in front of everybody. Oh, man. Yeah, good old cleanse tea. Keep that system straight but um yeah this yeah we got my man frank in <laughs> yep hit that like button y'all get that like button and so i i put on something calm me you know so i didn't see, so i won't seem too aggressive and stuff and i tell you i was actually going to invite some people on um some of the people who've had some comments, you know, that and everything, uh, some, to me, some odd comments. But the reason why I didn't, and I mean, I was at the point where I had a, I had a text message together and I was getting ready to email, I mean, text them and invite them on. I didn't want to be accused of harassing somebody. And I know because at the end of the day, a lot of us don't know each other personally. And some people, they take solace in having the ability to comment without any actual interaction with the person who they're talking to. Um, and you can see that by the fact that when I ask questions after people make statements, they don't really respond back to the questions. And if they do, they don't answer. They might answer one question, but they don't really answer all of the questions. And typically I ask about two or three questions and I was like, nah, I don't want to take a chance of somebody accusing me of something. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then next thing you know, you got the police knocking on my door claiming that I'm harassing somebody. And people can be like that, y'all. Let's just be real. People can be like that because folk don't like to be challenged and questioned and stuff and everything. All right, so you try to connect, okay. My bad if I missed you. If I missed you, let me drop my number in the chat. Yeah, I'm the type if you know you gotta um if I don't get back with you right away, call me, you know, hit me with text. If you email me, a lot of times I'll miss the emails. Um and everything. And then um, yeah, so you can, you know call or text this number here. This is my Google voice number. So, so Brian hit me up anytime. Um, I got a sign in tomorrow at 9 a.m. And if you want to talk after that, I'll be more than happy to give you a call. So just text me um, and everything. And stuff. <laughs> and stuff. Well, you know, all right, <laughs> man, he said, he'll come on. 
Yeah, and see, I don't have a problem, but let's just be real. Some of the people who are making comments toward me are young ladies, and I just be straight with you. I don't know if these folk are part of the sister girl, you know, um, group, you know, that's, you know, me too and you too and everything else too. And I'm just being straight with you. I don't want, I don't need that kind of stuff. I don't have a problem having a conversation. Let's talk about it, this, that, and the other. But I don't need somebody to be, you know, running off at the mouth in the comments section. Then when you really, truly try to have an engagement with them, they get scared and next thing you know, they cry. You're bothering me, you're harassing me and all of that. Because a lot of people don't really want to have the true conversation. They just want to say what they want to say, men and women. Um, straight up men and women <laughs> and all of that so um hey what's going on stay focused i appreciate y'all hitting the like button and sharing um yeah i had meant to try to put i was going to run this through youtube i mean through facebook but i forgot i don't feel like so if you got if you just share the link on facebook all of that good stuff let folk know um And I forgot to share it on Facebook earlier. I'm going to do that <clears throat> right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's see here. Who else we got up in here? We got Wanda out there in California. We got Akita, one of the coolest ladies around. And then my man, he got the info so he can hit me up. And I'll be more than glad to talk with you tomorrow um, and everything. And then Nona says, good evening, Mr. Girl. Thanks for your advice on reaching out to the Maryland. I was approved for you. Okay, got your commission approved. Great. This is what we want. This is what we want to see. This is what we want to hear. Um, people having success. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, man, some people are looking for a fact I want to learn. Yeah, and learn from each other. That's that's what it's about. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Tamika. Um, hope I'm saying that right, Miss Montgomery. Um, we got Natural Jesse in the house from New York. Yeah, hope everybody, yeah, the holidays. Yeah, everything was great for us. We just kicked back, chills, did some family time this time of the year <clears throat> you know we just get together and since our sons are grown uh, we don't celebrate the holidays the traditional way anymore so we just get together and spend time with one another and um let me show y'all something that i bought that i now if y'all been following us for a while y'all seen the videos of us playing the arcade games and for the Longest, um, let's count this, this. We had these arcade games, but ended up wearing them out. A <laughs> cold lot. So, um, I was able to buy some more. Unfortunately, I just found out about them, and um, I got too many daggone Amazon accounts. Which one must be this one? Mm, yeah and let me share this with y'all real quick so this is what i just purchased um for the for our family fun time i ordered three of them um i'm glad i did because this thing it supports two controllers you know you can um have two controllers right there these but it only comes with one. So I'm glad something told me to buy some extras. And I bought, and they was on sale for like 19 bucks a piece. So I bought three of these. And they're basically an arcade game um, with different types of games. You got Pac-Man. Um, I hope they still got Galaga in there. It look like they got Galaga in there, um, Mappy, and a couple of others. So it's like 10 different games in there all at once. And, um, and that's just something we like to do as a family and everything. So 
the the ones that we originally had you know broke down <laughs> uh, we wore those out so my wife loves pac-man um i like galaga one of my son he likes the racing car one i hope they still have the, that one on there and i think solomon he likes um mappy he's real good at that so everybody has their favorite game and then you can just plug this right up into your TV, HDMI cord and everything. So I like that. Plug right in there, HDMI. Um, I see this thing got a micro SD. So I'm wondering if you can download other games and play on here um, and stuff. So, so that's what I got, but it won't be here till Thursday. And we normally like to play that during the holidays, like, um, you know, it was on Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. And stuff but we'll be we'll have them <laughs> we're gonna have them next week and i can't wait to try them out and everything so that's going to be a lot of fun that's going to be a lot of fun um and i'm guessing this means it's wireless and if it is that's even better and stuff but we'll see we'll see so that's just something that we got but um this week has been good um let me see what did i do This week um, has been pretty good. Uh, let me go to my right calendar. Um, so this week I had what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this week was like nine, um, but I had three from. Um, a direct client which was good and then next week i got two from that same client so that's five this month so that's that's real good for them but i knew it was going to be a little light um this week going into thanksgiving and so and then next week i got one two three four five five right now um i got a networking event but shoot i'm not gonna be able to make that because i got to do those two on my direct so this month, I think I'm pushing 40. If I hit 50, excuse me, if I hit 50 um, orders this week, I mean, this month, that'd be really, really good. Uh, way below because I normally hit 20. I mean, I'm 70. So I'm going to be about 20 or so below. But again, it's the holidays. And again, you just never know what might happen between, you know, um, the 27th and the 30th. So anything that pops up, I'm ready to hop on it. Um, and do those orders that might come in especially last minute ones um all right so let me hop over here to this here all right so many of you know that um it's just so much stuff going on so i did the video a couple of days ago talking about the fees and everything and And I do welcome everybody's comment. My my issue is not even concerned. My issue is that people keep making statements without any backing. They don't provide any clarification. They claim that they're educating folk and all of that, but they never cite anything as like, okay, we can go stand on. And the reason why this is important, and feel free to ask your questions, okay? Always feel free to ask questions here and everything um the reason why that's important that when you on whether it's youtube TikTok, any social media you're going to make statements <laughs> even if you're face to face if you're going to make statements you got to keep in mind that the statements you make may not necessarily work with somebody's state and to say, oh, you can do this for us, marketing and advertising, or you can prepare wills and power of attorneys. You can't just make statements like that without being able to cite some, some definitive law or statute or something that supports it. And a lot of people just want to make statements like we got to be profitable. Okay, well, define profitability. What is profitability? And most people, well, you got to be making more money than you spend. Okay, well, how do you go about doing it? What are the steps to ensure that you're making more money, bringing in more money than you spend? 
And nobody talks about that because a lot of people out there spending way too much money on fancy shirts with logos on it. And you, y'all never seen me with a shirt with a logo. And I'm not saying you can't have that. I'm just saying that's not where I want to spend my money. I don't have gold plated cars. I don't have all of these digital things where I want somebody to tap. You're spending a lot of money on that. And I actually, I actually got a box of RFID cards somewhere around here. And I could actually make my own. Um, <clears throat> oh, here to go. And it's really for my wife. She has the time clock system, but it's the same type of cards. So I got RFID cards and I can program these probably into being digital cards that I can hand out to people. And I can get a screen printer to put the screen print something on all of these here i mean you could do that i could do that got a whole stack of them but the thing is one am i in a situation where i'm constantly around people like that and two do i want to invest that kind of money and right now the answer is no but i have the ability so profitability is based on how well you are able to keep your expenses below your um revenue so you bring your money in but the expenses you got going out so that's why it's dangerous when you go out here and getting all this business credit and listening to people talking about, oh you ain't got to pay it back yeah you do you got to pay it back and if the way you can't the way you go around not paying it back is constantly filing bankruptcy that's not good business okay so apparently an individual didn't like or didn't agree with um again the forty dollar situation and another thing about the forty dollar part i asked the question and the gentleman never answered it not your average attorney person never answered it i asked the question what type of assignment was it and i don't recall in what i shared with y'all that it was ever answered now they listed the companies, or was it a HELOC? Was it a um, a reverse mortgage? Was it a regular size mortgage? What was it? And nobody ever answers that question of what type of assignment is it that you're complaining about that you don't want to have a two hour trip, round trip at $40. Because the question then becomes, if it's a loan modification, and unfortunately the person lives an hour away well <laughs> if you do 40 if you if it's 40 dollars, how much effort do you have to put in actually doing it when you get down there with them is it 30 if, it, if it's 40 if it's 50 pages do you got to sign and stamp every single page most of the times no so what's the level of effort to do the order so if you can go and yeah you might have to drive an hour but you spent 10 minutes with them, made $40, came back, got a discount on uh, a tax deduction on the mileage, tax deduction on the stamping. And let's just be real. Let's be real. Some of us, and let me talk to the fellas right here. Fellas, you know, when you was young, especially if you my age, around the 40 to 68, 40 or above, especially 50 and above, graduated in the 80s, you know doggone well, you will hop on that bicycle and ride two to five miles to see your girl. You go, you go, you be rolling on that bicycle. Could only change, could only get one gear to work. You got a twelve speed, and you can only get one gear to work. And you will go see your girl. She call you up. Yeah, you come over and see me, and you'll be like, <laughs> you roll, and then get no play. And she'd be like, mm -mm -mm -mm, no, uh, uh. No, and you're standing outside her window. Oh, oh, my mama said you can't come inside, just stand on the front porch. And you would ride five miles to stand on the front porch to go see that slimming. That's what you would do. So you mean to tell me as a grown person who now has an opportunity to make some money, oh, I'm too good to drive to, uh, to, drive, to drive an hour. But yet, <laughs> when your nose is wide open, where were you at? Right there on the porch. Yeah, girl. Uh-huh. 
And if you was in the big city, you was on the stoop and they was there three floors up. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on now. You know I'm telling the truth. Same thing for you ladies. Hey, you like, I'm going to see if he going to come. Mm, he showed up. Can I get some? I can get. No, I'm going to just hand you the water through the, through, through the window. Come on, people. So now you grown and you that snuck up. You that, oh, no, I can't, I can't do that. But yet, Christmas time, how many people are out there today? Spent $40 in gas. Going around getting gifts and stuff for people who don't care for you. Buying gifts that you know your kids going to tear up. Spent all day trying to find something for your wife and you don't know what to get her. <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So that 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 premise about it's beneath me to drive two hours and let's just get when you was younger when you was in your teens and you had a car oh you was riding you was riding to go to the club oh we gonna go down to the base well the base is like an hour and a half away we ride and go to the base we gonna get in that military club and be around those, those those military women and those and those military men and you were 17 18 probably even 15 and sneaking in there and now your little happy button got grown and you like oh no that's beneath me and you have a chance to have your own business to get your own freedom and independence and you're saying oh no it's beneath me it's disrespectful or as one person talked about and we're going to show that to come it's insulting that you offer me $40 to go do a lot, to do anything. I'm like, really? Insulting. Oh my goodness. How we have gotten all stuck up. And the crazy part is this. Most of these same people don't do that in their W-2. They ain't rah, rah, rah behind their, their co-workers to make sure everybody's getting paid. You, you, you on your own. I got mine. You get yours. But all of a sudden, with being a notary, it's we all need to stick together. And we need to find a way to go against the per the people who are who are tearing us up. And most of y'all saw my video today. Um, I'm pretty sure y'all did because I think I got a lot of <coughs> excuse me views on that video. Um, wow, 279. So I would have to say that out of the 26 people here. Probably all of y'all saw the video I put out there today about notary training doesn't work. If your trainer, notary business training, my bad, notary business training, if your trainer taught you how to go into a title office, escrow office, or even work with the signing companies to get the maximum pay, and then all of a sudden you roll up in there and say, I'm gonna do it for a little less, or I'm willing to do it for whatever. And all of a sudden they just abandon you. And you must not have really had a good relationship with them. Maybe the stuff that you was doing to get that really didn't work. And they just picked you because you were just only, you were just the first live body that they had at that time. So I don't understand how you spending all this money on notary training learn the tips tricks and nuggets and all the intricate secrets from all of these people who got all of this connection all of these escrow officers in their pocket and then you're telling me that the people who they sent you to with all of these skills and all of this stuff that they taught you is now going to turn their back on you for somebody like me who didn't take that training and i just came up and said he said, well, how much do you charge for a refi? Well, I, I, 125. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going with you. We kicking, we kicking Charlene out. Charlene be wanting 200. Oh, girl, out. And we don't know whether you good or not, Griff. But we just gonna go with you. I don't believe that's happening. If it is, then you gotta question that title company. Or question what you was taught. Or maybe you really ain't that good as a notary. And they just waiting for the first person to come along to replace your behind. I'm just saying, what are y'all thoughts about that? Because it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks today. I'm like, 
all this money you're spending on training and little old me and just roll up in there and destroy all of that for taking one order that's a little bit less than what you are getting paid your agreement is your agreement between them mine is mine between them and the two should not cross and should not affect one another but you literally are saying if i come in there not talking the way you talk it's gonna mess your game up and that's the fallacy and again thanks for hitting the like button so we're gonna hop on this here so and this is just me sharing and trying to decipher and understand what people are saying and this is showing you where people are at okay this is showing you where people are at and we don't get to the comment that spurred the title of this here youtube tonight okay so here we have and let me i'm gonna have to zoom in i always like to make sure i hope y'all can see that clear enough turn your phone sideways if you're on your phone but it says <coughs> griff i really like you but you and others are lowballing the industry it's below minimum wage 40 is not acceptable again what makes it not acceptable if you go back to what the gentleman said it's because uh the distance the gas scanning dropping documents off and the performance okay so they're not paying us for those five things therefore it's not worth it and again what is the type of order that they're offering that they're asking us to do and why have and why are they basically pricing it at 40 okay yeah keep my throat voice here i have looked at the notary fee on the loan and boy we i got something and stay in here with me y'all i'm telling you stay in here with me because i got something to show y'all about that statement there i was up to three o'clock this morning researching and figuring some stuff out and putting some stuff together to show y'all and basically what they're saying here is because they look at this loan statement the, the settlement statement it says it's 300 dollars plus so if you take 40 for the signing Who's getting the rest of that money? I'm going to answer you, Natasha Thomas, 1135. I'm going to answer that. Since apparently no other human being on this earth who's in the notary game has answered that. Since nobody else in this notary business has answered that, that has possibly trained you. And see, here's the thing. With all of these notary trainers gotten all this 10, 15, 25 years experience, none of them can answer this can answer this question who gets the money but then again is it your whose business is it? is it really your business to get that money is it really your business to know who get the money you got yours they got theirs why do you need to know who's getting what you're an independent business owner you're not an employee okay keep that in mind so and you and everyone else who does this is making below minimum wage. I'm making below minimum wage. Wow. It's hurting the industry, period. How? Because see, to say that it's hurting the industry, what that means, in my opinion, let me make sure I got this zoomed in good here. What that means is that there's an industry standard. Now, the question is, let me come back to y'all. Follow me, y'all. Follow me with this. The question is, who sets the standard for what we're supposed to be getting paid? Because you're saying it's an industry that, that is hurting the industry, which means there's a standard way that things are supposed to be done, and we are messing it up. But here's the question. Who's offering the pay? Who's the one saying all we're going to pay is this? And like I said in that video I did earlier, if they offer this, if I say I want one fee, but then the person turns around and says, all we're going to pay you is this, then what do I do? 
You see what I'm saying? So you're saying I'm hurting the thing. And again, if the person you're saying is hurting the industry, who is setting the standard for the industry? Okay, because we're going to get into this. All right. So what my lady, though my man said, I removed myself from signing sir, signings and replaced with estate planning. Cool. Why wait two weeks? Like an employee to get paid as a business owner, I get paid today. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And also, I mean, and see, with most businesses, I mean, well, I know you know. I mean, because even with most businesses, you you have what they call <laughs> and call um 30 day invoicing. You know, so you can invoice 15 day invoice 30 30 day 45 60 90. Um, so and that's what you get with government contracts. So when you do government contract work, there is that thing of um invoicing, you know, a process of taking long. And I'm fine with that. I mean, that I'm fine with. I understand with the signing co companies and even direct title companies, because I got some title companies, they still take 30 days to pay. And they're direct clients and all of that. But that's a great point that you're making. And it says the signing service doesn't get the rest of the money. That is correct. But Tanya, it doesn't concern me what's on the settlement statement. I state my fee as long as my fee is paid on the agreed upon terms that's what i care about that is that is correct that is 100 correct and as my man here said the fingerprinting gurus i set the standard of my payment that is absolutely correct so let's continue so now it's hurting the industry that's everyone's point well here's my thing show me proof that is hurting the industry how is it hurting the industry because I know y'all gonna get tired of me doing this. Is it hurting the industry or is it hurting you? And how is it hurting the industry you? The industry you, okay? I guess that's what we should call it, the industry. Because how is it hurting the industry? What is hurting the industry? And then the question becomes, how often are people getting offered $40? Is that an everyday thing? <laughs> is that an every sign? Every single notary, every single where, every day is just getting forty dollars. I know that ain't true, whether direct or signing service. I know that ain't true. So, and nobody's been able to prove that point to me or to us or to anybody. Okay, so it goes on saying, please stop and set the standard of every notary. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Please stop and set the standard of every notary. There should be a minimum for what we accept across the board. The cost of living is through the roof, 25 and 40 highway robbery. The answer is no. So I asked a simple question. What is the minimum fee per loan type? Or are you saying, <laughs> saying there should be a minimum fee irregardless of loan type? Who is going to tell each signing title and lender this? is this going to be some kind of binding agreement since i'm not an employee minimum wage does not apply to my business revenue now <laughs> what is the minimum fee per loan type or is it based just period what is it these are these are real questions that need to be asked because you're saying here there should be a minimum for what we accept across the board. Okay, well, who's going to set that? that who's going to accept that? Who's going to set that? Hmm? Who? Now, again, being a professional association that we are with the NNA, we're not supposed to be trying to sit here and collude and come up and come up with this. But see, here's my thing: is a lot of y'all don't, a lot of them don't even think about it. They're like, oh, I ain't know. Yeah, we're not supposed to be colluding, and that's what the NNA said. And I wish, and I meant to put it in the time, I'm gonna go back and change it and put the at the NNA because I want them, they need to get in on this. The NNA need to get in on this and really set the record straight because people don't understand that by accepting that cert certification from the NNA and being a part of that professional association, you agree to the terms and conditions that that association has. And part of the terms and conditions is that we do not collude 
the set prices because it is against the law. And I did that in the <clears throat> last video, the Sherman Antitrust Act, all of that. This is where you're seeing that people don't care about truth. They just care about the money they can get and they're willing to go against law in order to get it. And they will pull you in there with them. They will pull you right in there with them to break law and then be like, oh, you, you grown, you should have did it. I mean, you're on your own bit. Well, man, I thought we were supposed to be together. And then now when you start getting your hands slapped, it's now you, people gonna be snitching, telling, well, it wasn't me. I didn't say anything in the meeting. I was just sitting on the Zoom and somebody else brought it up. And I was like, I guess it's true. I mean, I trust them. So these kind of folk, there are folk out there that will start this kind of stuff. And then when it's like the ball start getting rolling, they fade to the back. And then there's somebody else running. And then when it hits the fan, <laughs> it's up to, <laughs> it's up to set the notary standard. It's not an industry thing. The person sounds so W2, that is correct. Each individual just needs to decide for themselves what amount they're willing to get off the couch for. If you're willing 25, who am I to be mad? Because I won't get off. That is correct. That is that is the whole thing. That is the whole point of what I'm doing here. I'm not trying to shame anybody, but I'm just pointing out because individuals, maybe not this young lady, but there's other people who think this way and they're notary trainers and they're trying to be mentors. They're notary trainers and they're trying to be mentors and coaches. And guess what? They teach this stuff. This is the kind of thoughts that they're putting out there. So even though she may never be a coach or a trainer, but she may have learned this from somebody else as well as others. It will be difficult to set a fee across the board. States have different requirements for notary signing agents. <clears throat> that is correct. Latanya is 1000% correct. I think we need to remember that the assignment for 30 or 40 can be accomplished in 10 minutes or less. So what's the hourly rate? Correct. Correct. So what is it? How do you perceive people got this in their mind? Rodney, man, I appreciate that comment. I'm serious. You, 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 you nailed it on that one. Got me stuttering. I'm so pumped. <laughs> From There are a lot of people out here who are trying to run a business with a notary or whatever they're trying to run a business with the protections and comfort of a w-2 that's what this is about they want to say i'm a business but they want the comforts and protection of a w-2 of hourly pay get paid every so often and they want stuff guaranteed they don't want to fret or think Where's my check coming from? Am I going to be this short or that short? They don't want that. And that's why a lot of them don't have printers and they print from their job and they use their jobs resources to do this business. So they don't even really understand what it takes to do this business because they're sitting at oh sitting over there at their job printing on their Xerox and their, and their boss is trying to figure out why, how come all of a sudden the print count on the monthly maintenance then went up three times then went up triple than they usually be and i know some people done got in trouble for that i know they have so that's what i asked then i also asked the question can you share the formula you use to calculate notary pay in comparison to your state's minimum wage and i said her states because i don't know what state they're in Never got an answer back on that. <clears throat> then this one really got me. Y'all, again, pay attention to patterns of, of, of verbiage, people. You have to pay a, a attention to patterns of verbiage. Disrespectful, insulting, lowballing the industry. These are patterns of words that are out there amongst, the, amongst certain groups of notaries, and this is what they're feeding out there. Now, let me, I know y'all, let me, signing companies title companies and lenders if you're listening to me 
I'm trying to help you also to understand what's being said out there. I know there's some title companies and some science, especially some signing companies that don't care for me because I don't just put up with anything coming from the signing company. You ask me to do something. If it's not violating my state law, I'm not doing it. Okay. If it's violating my state, I'm not doing it. Okay. I understand your owner may have a certain preference on how they want to do stuff, but if that preference violates my state law, I can't do it. And if you are a former notary signing agent, you should understand that and respect my willingness to do things right in accordance with my state law. There are some that don't, they don't want to rock with me and that's their choice. Okay. But nonetheless, it doesn't eliminate the, the thought process and the mindset of the people out here. Okay. And I, and I caught that man. I caught that. I did some research and I caught that. I caught that somebody was just passing some info on, on to me. Yeah, I caught that. You're absolutely right. I forgot I had the music on. Let me turn the music off. But but see, that's the thing. So signing companies, title companies, lenders, if you're listening, this is about helping you to understand the mindset of the people because I've talked to some of y'all and y'all like, why are notaries acting this way? Why do they think this way? Why are they treating us this way? We're giving them an opportunity and then that you know, you, I think this is a good notary person. I have a good relationship with them. <clears throat> and then the slightest little thing goes wrong. They turn on me. This is why, because this is who they are. And they got this stuff in the back, back of their, their mind. And they're just waiting for an opportunity to turn in some cases. Marcy from Professional Notary Services. I did an interview with her a couple of, about a month or so ago. She said there was a young lady who she was paying um, 275 to 300 per commercial loan and i've done them for her and that's what she paid 275 to 300 she gets 75 percent of the fee that she gets to the notary the person had to do a closing commercial pro closing and it took a little longer than normal she wanted extra money for that marcy said no and then she tells her well don't don't call me no more she basically tells marcy don't call me no more how do you do that when you got and, and you're the main person that she's using there? She's exclusively giving you this work. And because one time it was a little more and she gave you all that she could give you. And you're like, well, you need to give me more. How do you turn and flip on somebody like that? Because that's who you are. That's the kind of person you are. You see what I'm saying? What my man said, he said <laughs> using their jobs for personal gain is an ethical and jailable offense. That is correct. And the person who typed that must be after 2021 because prior to that year, I don't recall so much back and forth in the note. That is correct. That is correct. A lot of these people been in here less than three years and they have no desire, no focus on learning to themselves. And they're just going and just letting somebody pour into them what they pour in and then they run it with it. You know, um, and my man said it is a fact that even that they even tell people they're doing heads from yeah so so here we go now this got me y'all are lowballing the industry a louis vuitton is the same price in every store they are sold in and that goes for a mercedes rolls royce etc please stop so what they're saying is oh my goodness what she's saying is that we're like louis but louis vuitton and mercedes or <coughs> as we said when i was growing up mercedes um and a rolls royce that we supposed to be the same across the board so that when they go to a notary in maryland to virginia to um california to texas or wherever the price supposed to be the same across the board and i'm like when did we become a conglomerate when did we when did we decide that we're going to be kicking it with each other like that when did we decide that who decided this for us and as I, and then as I say here, I did not know the economy was based on the price of luxury cars and pocketbooks. I did not know that. I didn't know that. That the luxury cars and pocketbooks. And where, oh, and then this is where the, the comment 
came from right here. Because I said in that video, the one about um, leave me alone, basically, you know, stop, you know, messing with my business on um, video. A servant is a slave. I am, I'm a professional offering elite services, Griff. Come on. I just let this sink in for a second. Notaries are public servants. And you're saying that we as public servants were slaves. And a lot of people took offense to that. Some people contacted me. A lot of people took offense to that because it's like, how are you equating that? A slave doesn't have free will. We freely do this here position. We freely do it, okay? And that tells you that there are people out here who are all about the money with regards to this. It's all about the money, the money, the money, the money. So let me share something with y'all. And I'm, and again, I'm not trying to put anybody down or make them feel bad, but that's to me that, and it's not about her. It's a mentality. A servant is a slave. So I guess the politicians who are public servants, the police officers, all of them are also slaves. And who controls the slaves? Because somebody got to control. Because slaves are people who are controlled. He said, I had notaries contact me on Google asked me for work and proceeded to say that they are certified and wanted me to train them. I politely <laughs> sent them on. I have no desire to tr to notary train anyone. My thoughts are exactly just ridiculous. He said, there are so many factors involved in taking an order or not. If Griff is out doing two or three order, orders, other signings and picks up a 25, how does that hurt him? It doesn't. And that's the thing. See, when you got somebody, oh man, that is perfect there, yeah, fam. When you got somebody who really ain't doing no work, $25 is uh, offensive to them. But when you got me, I'm pop, trying to pop 70 a month and I'm already out and somebody comes along, I got four already. And then somebody says, hey, we got this trailing dots. This here, you know, yeah, okay, I could, and it's a TBD, meaning to be determined, I can set the time myself. Bet, let me go on a run and knock that sucker out. Because that just adds to it. Because see, again, going back to the goal, my daily goal is $300, minimum, 300, three to $500, ideally five, but $300. So if I got, say, 275 worth of orders, that 25 just helped me to meet my, my monthly goal. I mean, my daily goal which is going toward my monthly goal. But when you don't have a daily goal and you just have a per signing goal and you're sitting there looking for each signing to be a certain dollar amount before you move, which is your proper right. Don't get mad at me if I don't have the same viewpoint. It's that simple. And again, I don't think the notaries who are taking these 40 or 50 or $25 orders are going around and telling the other notaries they better take this. You got to take this. No. Now, if a notary is, I guarantee you, here's what the reason why. They're saying it because you are probably complaining that you ain't making no money. So the notary will say, well, if you ain't making no money, why don't you take these orders and just get something going? No, 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 no. That's beneath me. And see, here's the crazy part. This same conversation been going on for five years. And a lot of these people have been in this business for less than three. And you think that what you're saying is new. It is not. This conversation has been going on long before you have even thought of coming into this here industry. And even if you had your notary commission for 10 years, the conversation has still been going on before you ever got on this side of the notary business. And then my man said, <coughs> Here said she committed the fallacy of false equivalence. That is correct. Now, it says here, this is from the NNA. What is a notary public? 
a responsible person appointed by state government to witness the signing of important documents and administer oath to increase public trust in transactions and sign documents to act as an impartial witness for signers and documents. This is what we are to do. We are out there, says this members, and this is a well, public service just to let people know who we are because you got some scammers out there. And it goes in, and this is who we are. We are here to administer oaths on behalf of the state government. We are appointed by the state. We are appointed by the state. It is not. They did not appoint us to be a professional offering elite services because the bit, the job is so daggone simple. You don't, you ain't got to be elite to just to be a notary. You just got to be competent and responsible and follow state laws because you can be a professional offering elite services all you want. But do you know how to notarize? And let's just be real. We got a whole buttload of people out there that do not know how to notarize documents. And if they don't know how to notarize your, the documents and do that correctly, then how professional are you? I'm not saying that's the, the case for this young lady, but it's the case for a lot of people out there. A lot of people, okay? So I'm sitting here like, okay, y'all are way off basis now. Okay, so this is what we, this is, that's what spurred this video. And I wasn't going to do anything today. I was just going to chill. Go and get me some sleep. <laughs> okay. <coughs> That's what I had planned on doing. Now, y'all remember the statement she said earlier that they looked at the settlement statement. And I've been thinking about doing this for a while, but I said, nah, because people might think I'm being too pretentious and I'm bragging or whatever, which I'm not. But I figured, I said, you know what? I probably need, I need to do this. And I have been thinking about it for about six months or more. But after hearing that statement last night about they look at the settlement statement, I said, well, you know what? Let's look at the settlement statement. So what Griff did was he pulled up settlement statements of about, I think, six or seven of them. And we're going to go through this here real quickly, okay? And so y'all can see. And this is a good learning thing. That's why I was asking y'all to hang in here. And I appreciate all 39 people here. Make sure y'all hit the like button, share, all of that good stuff, okay? So, <laughs> so we're going to go through this here step by step. All right. So hopefully this here is, let me zoom this in a little bit more. So this is a settlement. I'm blocking out the, the names of the, the companies and all of that. But this is off the CD. If you're familiar, if you've been doing this, you <laughs> should know what the CD looked like. It says notary fee that's paid to such and such company of $150. What does this 90 mean over here in the corner? The 90 in the corner is what I got paid. They got 150. I got paid 90 of that 150. That means I got paid 60% of the notary fee. They paid me 60% of the notary fee. This one, notary fee, from whoever the GFE is, was 200. I got paid 120, which is equivalent to 60%. I got paid 60% of the notary fee. And this, I remember specifically, was a reverse mortgage. On this one, settlement fee. Now, this one is interesting. We're going to come back to, well, we're going to stick here and I'm going to show y'all. Settlement fee, because on this one, I could not find specifically what the fee to the notary was. And the only thing equivalent that I could find, figure out was that under the settlement fee <laughs> of $825 came my $80 notary fee. They paid me $80 out of that. 
But going back to her question, what is it? Where's all the rest of the money go? And you're going to get into that. So where does the rest of that money go? It goes right here. So I did a Google search. A guide to understanding title fees. And it says it includes attorney fees. It can include closing protection letter fee, commitment, title insurance, lenders, title insurance, settlement fee, abstract fee. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was that small, y'all. My bad. Let me go back. So these are all the different things that can fall under this title fees. Okay. And they can craft it however they want. Attorney fee, closing protection letter fee, commitment, owner's title insurance, lender's title insurance, settlement fee, abstract fee, search abstract fee, survey fee, notary fee, deed prep fee, endorsement fee, recording fee. All of these can be contained within this settlement fee to the title company. So what, what does this mean? And they don't have to break it out individually. They can just list it all together. So, ma'am and the rest of y'all, that's pretty much how it can be laid out. And I'm saying pretty much because each company is different. Now, follow me here. Follow me. Here's another one. Settlement cl or closing fee to such and such company, $75. Well, look who here. I got paid 70 of it, which is 93%. Down here says mobile notary fee. Now, if you notice, <coughs> at no time have you seen the word loan signing agent. Just, just pointing that out. Settlement fee to whatever company, 225, and I got 175 out of that which is 55% of the fee that they receive for getting a mobile notary. This one, notary fee, 175. I got 90, which came out to 51%. Notary fee, 80. I got 60, which turned out to be what? 75%. So not counting the 825, down here at the bottom, it was $905 gross notary fees, not counting that 825 part. And 605 was paid to me, which comes out to 67%, meaning I got paid 67% of the fees that was dropped out there. We're at in anybody's W-2 you're getting 60% of what, they, of what they're bringing in. <laughs> because if you're in government contracting, when you're a government contractor, like let's just say Booz Allen Hamilton, I work for them in Deloitte and many others, Northrop, was it Northrop, Cubic and all these other companies. I work for these companies, Adiana. And when they did government contracting, the government had to pay them a fee for each person. Booz Allen, typically, I think their fee was about, let's just say, $250. So for each person, the government paid them $250. I probably, I, with them, I was making like $47. That was not 50 or 60% of the fee that they was getting. They got the lion's share of that. With these companies, they're paying me the lion's share of what they're getting. You see what I'm saying? They're paying me the lion's share. So I find it very hard for me to fuss about the fees when you really break it down and you see you're getting the bulk of it. You're getting the bulk of the fee. Somebody paying them 200 and they're giving me 120. What more can I complain about? Well, I want 200. Okay, then that means they need to get more. And if they're not allowed to be paid more, or if they agreed 
to be paid this fee and nothing extra, then how can they give you more? That's where that's where the, the, the insanity comes in. And I'm showing you the data here. These are real. This is my and I'm not making these numbers up. I just couldn't really show you certain things because then they'd be revealing people's personal information and all that. But y'all know I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. But my man here said this. This is all. This is all just sounds like doing business. The signing company got you the business. So, yes, they get a cut. If you want to make more, then go direct. But going direct takes a lot of work. And that is correct, Alexander. That is correct. And it is a true commitment because when they want you, they want you. Just like my direct client, I got a, I, I got a direct client. And I, it's a networking event that I really want to go to next week. But the direct client was like, yo, <laughs> and they don't know that I'm wanting to go to this um, event, but they were like, hey, we got this, um, these signings. It's end of the month, next Tuesday, at this time and that time. And it's right, it's an hour before and an hour after the thing starts. I was like, okay. And the only reason why I haven't told the other person that I won't be there yet, because sometimes they will adjust the time. Sometimes they say, oh, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to do it early or we're going to do it later. But nonetheless, I got to make myself available. So guess what? And because I know that that's a, my next signing is at 11 and then 1 or something like that. Yeah, 11 and 1. The event starts at noon. So I can't go. But guess what? My next signing ain't until 5. Because I know from experience that sometimes that second one, that 1 o'clock, to end up being two hours. And if I know, and I know if I put another sign, it can mess things up. So I've learned. And you're right. Going direct takes a lot of work because when they want you, they want you. And they, they even, are you available? I'm checking. Yes, I'm available. No ifs, ands, or buts. And nothing else gets thrown on my calendar that would interfere with that. Okay. And then my man said, I work for a consumer manufacturing company. Salaries account for <clears throat> no more than 20% of the total revenue. <clears throat> I wish it was. Yeah. Or he, it, that's what I'm saying. What this is showing is that people don't understand money. They don't understand business and they don't know how to take advantage of what's being presented to them. Okay. These aren't fake numbers. These are real numbers. But then these notaries don't want to do the work to earn the direct business. They still want to get paid like they did. Leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth, the signing company, the title company, etc. <clears throat> that is correct. Oh, I'm trying to figure out why does my throat feel so dry? I got the heat on. That's what it is. Let me turn the heat off. Love technology. You can just hit a button and let's turn that heat off. <laughs> There we go. It'll cut off in a second. But you're right, Alexander. And appreciate you. This is my first time seeing you here. So I really do appreciate you stopping by. Um, I don't know if you saw me advertise on TikTok or you've just been a follower, but appreciate you sliding on up in here. Um, as I continue to see the notary fees, is this considered G and W? No, this isn't considered. This is um loan closings. This is this is um mortgage loan closing, whether it's a reverse um purchase or sell and that's what these were it was either a reverse mortgage a refi a purchase or sell okay i see everyone calls themselves something different a little confused okay yeah all you got to be concerned about is that you get paid how they call themselves or list themselves you know notary fees this fee look you're right. People want, I'm a signing agent. I'm a loan sign. I'm a certified this. I'm a typic. I'm a, I'm a cryptic and this. That. People love titles and they love to make themselves feel special. My goal is to make the person who's paying me feel special. Empowering them by doing the stuff correctly. So they're not looking like a fool. Because if I don't look like a fool, guess what? You don't look like a fool. 
And if they're looking like a fool, it's because they messed up something on the end. But I'm going to do my part right. And that's one of the areas that is messed up right now within the notary. And I believe Alexander fully understands that that notaries aren't doing stuff correctly. If y'all look at um, the video that I did, a short video that I did called What Makes a Fee Disrespectful, there's some comments in there from notaries who said that they went out as a witness. And more than likely, these are Florida notaries. They went out to support another notary as a witness, and that notary was very unprofessional. This is what we got going on. But yet these same folk want to sit up here and talk and grab the tiki torch and sit up here and act like they chasing out the Frankenstein monster and want to burn the village down because they want some kind of pay or some equal pay for equal work. And again, W-2 mindset, complete W-2 mindset. I agree with Alexander. That's precisely the point. Correct. So I'm sitting here looking at this and I'm like, I don't know where where these people mindsets are at, but they are really, really warped. These folk are really, really warped. Hands down, period. And I don't. Oh, oh, oh I got to show you all something else. I know something else. Like, There's something else I need to show you all. So, where the heck is it? Um, hold on one second. Hold on one second. I got to show y'all one more thing. I got to show y'all one thing. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say something here that I'm gonna just be straight with you. It might offend some folk. But I got to put it out there um, because that's just how I am. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. Um, I got to put it out there. Let me find the video. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Oh, man. Okay. Where the heck is it? Hold on one second. All right, let me go back here. Because I be forgetting where I be putting my videos sometimes. And stuff. Hold on one second. So one of the things that I'm concerned about, I'm still um very much concerned about is the fact that an individual pretty much got land based it for taking a $25 signing okay so y'all remember this comment from the live the other day where Jeff Clark he runs Acme Notary and he also has a group called Family um, Notary Family now I don't know if this networking event that he was talking about was his okay But he says in there, in the networking meeting last month, a bunch of notaries jumped all over a new notary for doing a notarization for $25. It came off as shaming, but it was more about education. I'm sorry, I don't know how you shame somebody and call it educating. Now, she knows her worth. And this here sounds very cultish. Not saying he's running a cult, but the way they're doing things it's very cultish. Like I'm going to make you believe something, whether you want to or not. And that bothers me. And I'm still ticked off about that. And I will say this here. And it was a young lady because it says she, what I know is this, there ain't no daggone way. If I, I, she must've been single. But there's no way that as a man, I will let any of you suckers treat my spouse that way. You will be getting waxed on and waxed off. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm just telling you straight up. So if any of y'all ever try to roll up on me or my wife, talk about, you know, why you let him act, you, you best keep that to yourself because I'm telling you now. 
that is not something you want to do? How do you go and take somebody's spouse and treat them that way? That is very disrespectful. And whoever group that was, that should not have ever happened. That should not be a part of the process plan or anything in any way, shape, or form. No one should ever be treated that way. And shame on each and every one of you who did it and sat back and watched it and making excuses for it. That is some bull. So know this. If I'm ever at a networking event, which I guess you won't be inviting me. If I see you treating a notary like that, it ain't going to be pretty. I'm telling you right now. You are not going to treat a notary like that. You're not going to disrespect this person who you don't have any kind of true relationship with whatsoever. You're just going to come. And they're there to learn and grow. And then you're going to sit here and jump all over them. And then here's the crazy part. He says later on in the video that people normally charge 75. So I'm sitting here like, I thought 75 was beneath everybody. So it was one notarization. The person did it for 25. And let's just say this person, this young lady was married or dating somebody. And that person was like, yeah, babe, let's go go ahead on and do it. Matter of fact, I'll go with you because they said it was 10 o'clock at night. So what? The person goes out and does it, is all happy, and then comes around y'all suckers and y'all want to sit there and treat them like a piece of trash. It would not be a happy day in anybody's neighborhood if you treated my spouse that way. You treated my baby? Cool. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. No. Somebody is going to be dealt with. Because that ain't what this business is supposed to be about. We always talk about we all this cool with each other and we're like a family, not talking about just notary family, but that's just in general. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. And I know people don't like to hear this kind of stuff, but I just got to put it out there because there ain't no way. That it, and see, the thing is, the reason why it burns me up so much, because I've been called by other notaries where they pay for events. And the person basically got online and told them, I ain't giving you nothing back. Almost like that Janae White down in Florida when she got on Instagram talking about you ain't getting your money back. That same attitude. Telling people, well, I ain't feel like coming to the event or doing it and you ain't getting your money back. I don't know why y'all put up with that. I don't know why you put, you do not supposed to put up with that people. Somebody taking your money and then telling you they not going to get they. They, they don't show up to do what they're supposed to do and then tell you it ain't going to give you your money back. And I've heard about people in private Facebook groups cussing folk out, overtaking an order for $60, cussing folk out. You're hurting my business. You're doing this to me. You're doing that. To me. That tells you they got some insecurities. And I'm going to put this out there. There are some people in this business, men and women, young and old, they got some personal issues with them, self-esteem issues, and they are trying to use this to make themselves seem like they're something special. That's why I'm a trainer. And you can stand before people. They don't know all of your mess. They don't know what's in your trunk and in your closet. And you presenting yourself as. But the truth comes out. The truth always come out because people like that, when they get under pressure, when people stop paying them or are not able to pay them, they change in a heartbeat and they start going off on people. And I know I see the numbers done drop. People don't like to hear this kind of stuff. And that's fine. That's fine. Don't get bounce on out. But truth be told, and I'm telling y'all, y'all going to mess around and do the wrong person's spouse like that. And somebody going to mess around and get hurt.
y'all need to stop that. So if you run in a notary group of any sort, y'all need to get that stuff in check. 100%, 100%. So I want to show y'all this real quick also. And thank y'all for working with me while I, I just had to put that out there. Maybe not, I don't know. But I put that statement out there, what it said, and I don't, and 8% said yes, that that person, that it's right for notaries to attack each other over the fees we charge. 8% of people said yes. 8% said yes, that's okay. 92 said no. But I like this comment that my man here, Mr. Jan Jamison said, said, it's never okay. You said in another video that if a notary did enough signings for 75, they could make a substantial amount of money. Correct. I forget the total amount, but you also said that do, that many signings are a great confidence builder, which I wholeheartedly agree. Plus, what some people surprise, some surprisingly don't seem to understand is that once you develop the reputation of handling 75 like a champ, it won't be long before the higher paying signings find their way to you. It's inevitable and mathematical. If I'm wrong, please enlighten me. And they're not. Now, this is what I found real interesting. This gentleman here said, yes, this is our livelihood. Notaries taking these insulting price loan signings have already dropped <laughs> those prices down significantly. Attacking isn't right, but we definitely need to be respectfully educated. Who is supposed to be the appointed educator in notary fees? Who is supposed to be the appointed educator in notary fees? Who? That's what I'm trying to figure out who. I'm trying to figure that out who. But see, Nona, what they're talking about is for the loan closing, not the state mandated fees. <clears throat> they're not talking about the state mandated fees. They're talking about the fees we get paid to do loan closings, which could be 125, which could be 50, which could be 85. That's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about. So I asked them a simple question. Didn't get an answer. What's the plan? Let me zoom in a little bit more. What's the plan to change this with all signing companies, title, and lenders? What's the plan? How do we change this? How do we get them to do this? What price would you consider non-insulting? Is that price based off of the type of order or just a flat price across the board? And see, this is what I'm saying. People are making statements and they have every right to. But when asked a pointed question, there is nothing coming back. And I'm showing y'all this so y'all can understand when you're in your individual group. So you just out here kicking it by yourself or doing whatever. People keep making all these statements about what, how things should be, but nobody can come up with an articulated plan to make it happen. I did a quick search. They said it's like, um, oh, it's like 20 some thousand title companies. I wish I could remember where I put it in. Who, and if you got any questions, please drop them in there. Let me look something up real quick because I need to find something. Because I had did a search the other day. Um, and I had did a search the other day. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know if I screenshotted it or not, but I had did a search on title companies and everything. Um, and I 
cannot find it. But basically, there are so many daggone title companies, it ain't funny. There's so many different lenders out there, it ain't funny. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's will. And see, even the term lowball, you know, a lot of people use that term. Um, Okay, so let's look. Let's look. It says, what is lowballing? A lowball offer is a slang term used for an offer that is significantly below the seller's asking price or a quote that is deliberately lower than the price the seller intends to charge. To lowball means to deliberately give a false estimate for something. Now, Taking that definition, somebody says, I'm going to pay you $60, and you say that's a lowball. Lowball as compared to what? What are you comparing the lowball, the offer to? Somebody said, I pay 60 <clears throat> The company you're dealing with, the company you're dealing with pays 60 for this assignment. And you say that's lowball compared to what? What is the standard industry price supposed to be for what they for the order that you're doing? See, words matter. Just I mean, if you it's a slang term, meaning an offer is significantly below the seller's asking price. So somebody is saying, I want it for this price, or the, whoever. You said, I want it for 80. Is that what it's supposed to be? Now, if a company says, if you tell them, they say, what's your fee? Well, my fee is 200. <clears throat> and they come back and say, well, we only gonna, we only pay 60. Eh, I would consider that low ball. But if they didn't ask you what your fee was, and they just came out and told you this is what we pay, that's different. That's different, in my opinion. Somebody is telling, they send out a blast and they send out an order to, to 200 notaries saying, we got this order for $75. You either accept it or you reject it. But that's a low ball order. Compared to what? That's my question. Compared to what? Um, but he says, Except no balls has nothing to do with the next alert that a person who signed every signing is independent for all orders. That is correct. However, someone else said if you do good work, certain things, agencies will increase your fee that they offer you. And that is true. Some of them will. Griff, these distractions will never have a rebuttal. We get alerts when we comment and someone responds. They just want to talk without. Yeah responses or repercussions and on and i know some people say well why you keep dealing with this grip because there are some great people out here in this business and they really want to do good and they're confused like i don't know what and there's not anybody else speaking opposite of what these folk are saying all you hear is they're treating us bad. They're doing us wrong. They're doing us dirty. They're getting over on us. They get in these notary groups, go to these meetups, and sometimes at these conferences, and they're going around being taught that the signing company is evil, that this company is evil, that company is evil. But the thing is, the title company is the one that's picking the signing company. The title company is the one that's saying, sign the company, go get me this work. Go get me this notary. I mean, go get this notary. The title company agrees to work with that signing company. And the signing company is working on behalf of the title company. So if the title company says, signing company, all I'm paying you is $150. And that signing company has figured out that they need 
$75 per signing in order for them to survive and keep going. Well, guess what? The other 75 is coming to you. And you say, well, I need more money. They're like, they're not going to pay me no more money. They're not giving me any more money to give to you. Well, who's the day they're talking about? The title company. So you're talking about you want, you you know, you're talking about this, you're fussing at the signing company. And I'm not saying that all signing companies in this. Some of them are, are probably making two, three hundred and they just paying you a little bit. It's their choice. And then if you find out, you address them. And then if they don't want to pay, OK, and then you just have to keep it going. But this thing can be pretty somewhat deeper than what y'all think. But I deal with this stuff because I'm trying to help other notaries out here or just notaries in general, give them something else to think about, to see that this is the mindset of some folk out here. And you as a business owner, gotta be careful, gotta be mindful that you don't just blindly go following behind people. I don't, I don't want nobody blindly following me and listening, question me. That's why I always say, throw your questions in there, question me, challenge me. I'm fine with that. But as we see from this video and the last one, when you start questioning them, they got nothing to say. All they're saying is, we need a minimum. And see, here's the thing. With so many of them believing that we need to get paid this dollar amount, none of them have come up with a plan. None of them have gone out and talked to the companies that are paying the fees. Instead, they attack us. They say we are wrong for doing it, but wouldn't they be wrong for offering it? Let's think about that. You're saying I'm wrong for taking it, but you're not saying they're wrong. You you, you claim you're saying you're wrong. They're wrong for offering it, but you ain't saying nothing to them. Why won't you talk to the source? They won't talk to the source. They won't talk to the people who are doing the offerings, these low offerings, they don't say anything to them. They don't, as far as I know, they're not writing emails, they're not calling, they're not doing anything. But then they're getting in meetings and they're jumping on notaries, they're fussing at me, they're fussing at you, they're telling us we're hurting the industry. Okay, if all of us who are taking these low offers walked away from this notary business today, will the people who are offering the low offers stop offering them? And if that's the case, what would you want to do then? If I'm not around, if Caprinus and anybody else isn't around anymore to take the offers, but they still keep offering them, what are you going to do then? How are you going to get the high feet in? And as I said in my other video today, if we all agree, we're going to get paid this fee. And they say, we're not paying that fee. Now what? Now what do we do? What's the plan now? And nobody has a thing to say. So if you don't have a plan for when what you want to do doesn't work, then leave us alone about what we do do. And I, I'm trying to find another word to say, but I'm going to do this. Mm, good call, y'all. I'm going to do this. You don't like it? Give me something better to do. Well, we just all need to just, just take a stand. And I'm going to end on this, y'all. I'm not going to be up here all night. Can't be on that show. If y'all got some questions, want to talk about something else, it's Friday, Friday. We can talk about whatever. Again, how many of these same people who are running around talking about Louis Vuitton and this, that, and the other, and this is insulting, <clears throat> how many of them actually go to bat for their co-worker who busted their butt but didn't get a proper raise, didn't get promoted, got skipped over? They gave the they gave the promotion to some lazy person who barely comes to work 
and that person been there five years, that person only been there six months, and they made them supervisor and didn't make your your, your homie or your home met a supervisor, and they've been there faithful, and they know the job better than anybody. I don't see you should rising up for them. All you doing is probably take them out for drinks, get them drunk to hopefully forget that, forget how bad they got messed over. But you ain't rising up for them. So how is it that all of a sudden with the notary, we got to rise up? I mean, we, I mean, folk acting like we're in some kind of battle. Like we're out here in war. And in your W-2, you tail tucked between your legs. I ain't messing up my benefits. <laughs> Are there any other questions, concerns about anything? Anything you want to talk about? I have a question. I heard something about the last day of each month <clears throat> for the loan over there. Is it close? Was it? okay. Um, that is the day. Hold on, I can pull that up for you. I can help you find that. Let me pull that up. All right, where is it? Uh, let me pull this here. Um, hold on. Hold on one second. All right. So typically, um, what it is, the last code is typically, let me zoom this in some. What? Oh, it's very, oh, there it is down here. All right. Let me back down and touch. So, what this typically means is the last day that. The rescission, if I'm mistaken, and please correct me, y'all. Basically, so this year is the last day of the month where the right to um, cancel will end in that month. So the 28th and the right to rescission is the 31st. On this date, it goes into the next month. So typically, that last day of the month, which tends to, depending on how it falls, it'd be pretty much between the 26th and the 29th. I think, or maybe the 25th and the 28th, or something like that. Um, but you look at the different calendars. So the last day, the 26th. Okay. So the 26th, and then the last day for the rescission on this one is the 29th. That's within this month. But then when you hit the 27th, it goes, okay, cool. Latanya said, Latanya said I was correct. And Caprinus. Okay. See, I'm I'm smart. I know a little something, something. I be listening and paying attention and everything. So, and let me share something with y'all. I'm going to give y'all a real good secret. New notaries. Do not call signing companies during that time. The reason why, because a lot of them have told me they're busy trying to get closings done, and that ain't the time they really want to talk to notaries about, hey, you got some work for me? They're like, look, whatever gets sent out, that's it. we ain't got time to be sitting here and hearing your spiel that you got from your notary trainer and your and your little elevator pitch. So many signing companies and um, the processors and the schedulers that I've talked to over the years are like, why do notaries call us on the last closing day of the month we're trying to figure out why you're not working and you're calling us asking us to send you work and we're trying to get closings done that's what i've been told okay my man said griff you are running a notary business and that person is trying to make money then i like that i like that i like that 
I like that. And this is why I said your notary business training isn't working because they're not really teaching you the fundamentals of business. They're just teaching you some tactics and techniques that happen to work for them in their heyday. In their heyday, meaning they're probably not even doing signings anymore. So in their heyday, hey, this is how we did it. We just walked up to the signing company, to the title company, like, I got some water. I got a bag of chips. <laughs> and I got a cough drop for you. What kind of signage you got, baby? Uh, what, what you got for me? And then they're like, oh, you got a, you got an open bottle of water? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. Bam, you know, or my favorite, Healy Crystal. Healy Crystal, I'm going to tell you all, this here, I don't know if it, this here is, if you got a cut or a burn, I know this is just a sign. This stuff here, I don't like the way it smells, but man, if you got a cut or a burn or whatever, Healy Crystal Essential Oil will help it heal fast. I always keep some at my desk and I'm always cutting myself doing stuff. But the bottom line is this, you sitting up here, you know, they're sitting up here telling you stuff that might be antiquated. They're showing you videos of stuff that's antiquated. They're still living in yesteryear and things have changed. My man here said, <clears throat> I have a question. You always speak about the importance of updating your profiles. How do you update the number of signings you do as well as the type of signings where are signing companies getting it okay um what i do in my profile i just create an area and i just update it okay i just put it in there it is a i just find a spot and i just say i've completed this many signings and i there's no special way to do it but i just put in there i, I create this you know i've done this you know number of signings and everything <clears throat> um and when we have our next um, members meeting, we'll go back over that. Hopefully, you because you're a channel member, so hopefully you'll be able to join, and we'll cover that. And matter of fact, what I'll do is, if I can, over the weekend, I'll do a video for the members talking about that. But I have videos out there already. One is called, um, Your Profile Will Separate You From Them. So in that video that's out there for everybody to see, it covers that. But you know, if you don't get it in there, I can do something separate. Um, they don't have to do signs anymore because, it, correct, that's the thing. That's the game. That's the game. And that's why I keep saying, and I said it at the beginning, end of last year, in the beginning of this year, that we're, you know, they're talking about there's an influx of notaries. There's too many notaries. Here's the game. If you got 30% of the notaries constant every month, constantly saying, I need to be a trainer, where are they going to get people to train? They get it with their TikTok stuff. They go on TikTok and talk about how they're making all this money, lying through their teeth, but they're telling people, I'm making all this money. So you get all these TikTokers talking about how they're making all this money doing notary. Then people sign up for their so-called training, so-called mentorship. And then they're not making money after they paid these people. And then he tell them, and then 30% of them say, well, I'm going to get into that game of, I'm a trainer too. I know how to help you make money. And then it's like the, um, like that, that shampoo commercial. And they told two friends and so on and so on and so on. And this thing you know, so my trainer told me how to get into the game of training. And then I'm going to tell you how to get into the game of training. So I'm paying my person. And that's why I did that video called Notary Pyramid Scheme, because it's just like a pyramid. You got the person at the top and then they're just and they say, well, no, there's no product. Yes, it is. The product is training. The product is mentorship. That's the product. And they tell them, sell people by having them click my link, my affiliate link that I'm going to give you, and you'll get, a coin, you'll get some coins off of that, and it comes back to me. 
And then if they do it good enough, they pat them on the back of the head. Oh, you did good. So I'm going to set you up to do it yourself. As a matter of fact, if you really want to do it, go steal somebody else's course. Go steal somebody else's information and repackage it as if it was yours. And never come out on YouTube like Griff does talking about it, but do it on TikTok and do it here and never really allude to it so that people don't know that the material that you're teaching them, you stole. So many people have stolen Judy Lawrence. The Queen of Apostille has stolen her course material and is teaching it. And acting like they got it, they like they did it themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It says, it feels like it's turning into one of those. Yeah, it's a money tree thing. It is because when you have people who don't have it within them, that have the mindset of the people who I've showed you their comments, well, this is this is insulting. This is disrespectful. I need I need to I need to buy that. I ain't trying to buy no Louis Vuitton. I ain't trying to get a Mercedes. But some people are trying to use the notary money to do that. And they can't, and I guess they feel they can't get a, a Mercedes off of their $25. <laughs> so they want $200, $250, whatever. And I'm like, okay, who's going to pay you that consistently? That's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> Prell shampoo. Yeah. Yeah. Prell shampoo and so on, so on and so on. That's what's happening. They're sitting here, and then, and then, and a couple of months ago, some of the trainers were telling people, well, if you ain't making money with, you know, loan closings or general notary work, then go teach a mentor. So you're going to teach a mentor people because you can't get any business and you're going to teach a mentor them and they can't either. That one older girl on YouTube was going on and on about how she made 15 grand in a month. And then a couple of months later, she's talking about how she only had two signings. That Ooh, and I meant to laugh. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. People don't understand business and they don't know how to plan and prepare. They don't. I <laughs> like that. They don't. That they don't. That's because you did a bad, you did bad business and lost them all. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. I, yeah, I meant to laugh at that. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to laugh at that. Yeah, because I'm telling you, people get beside themselves. I don't talk about. I didn't. I don't share this story a whole lot. But there was a lady, and my wife was in the car, talking to you know when the lady was talking to me. She knew my wife was in the car. And this was like maybe two years ago. The lady said she was doing great with the business, making money, getting orders. And for some reason, she felt that she just wasn't getting paid enough. So she asked, I think she said for a five or ten dollar increase in the notary fee. And they stopped using her. And see, one of the things you got to realize. A company, they're like, we're, constant, we're consistently giving you work. And let's just say they understand that they're giving you 60% of what they're bringing in. To give you 5 or $10 more hurts them. So I'm not going to just, I'm, since you're an independent contractor, I don't have to use you. I'm just going to move on from you. And I just give this work to somebody who appreciates it. And see, y'all don't realize that when you sit here unjustifiably go at these companies about paying you, you're showing them that you don't appreciate what you're getting. He said, then she said in one of her following videos that she lost her passion for notary work and got a job as a social. When times get tough, like I always say, when enough pressure gets applied, people respond. When enough pressure gets applied 
and the pressure of actually running a business is what's hitting these folk in their face. Man, I thank you, Alexander. I really appreciate you coming in and sharing tonight. When the pressure of running a business slaps these people in the face, they run. They don't know what to do. They like, I'm going to go be a title person. I'm going to go do something else in the real estate. I'm going to be a loan officer, real estate agent, bank manager. I mean, this is what I've been hearing. I'm like, man, I thought y'all knew how to scale the business and this, that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but they're abandoning the loan closing. And yeah, things are tight out here, but there's still loan closings. I did one today, did a HELOC. Got one tomorrow. Got five next week, the first part of next week. They're still happening. You just got to put yourself in a position. And unfortunately, it might be for a little bit lower, but you'll be okay. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. And everything. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. And see... To keep my mind pure on what I share with y'all, I don't look at those other notary channels. I hear about them because when people get screwed over enough, then that's when they call me. When they don't waste money, that's when they contact me and be like, and that's why I don't be trying to charge people a whole lot of money. And that's why I help people out for free so much. Is because by the time most people get to me or decide they want to listen, talk to me, not even listen, but just talk to me and try to get some, they tapped out. And I and over seventy percent of my audience are women thirty five and older. I don't feel right trying to charge these people, and then and your man is like, yo, who's this Uncle Griff you sending money to? I'm very cautious of that. It's that simple. I'm very cautious. I will talk to you. This that, and that. I just here, here's the information. Boom. You do what you want with it. You want to be the ch- a ch- a member on my YouTube channel? Cool. But it's not. You're not obligated. You can quit anytime. In the story. That's it. Boom. I'm. I help you out over it. That's it. I'm not sitting here pinging people. Okay, you need me to do a dot review, cash at me, cash at me, cash. That's not me. That's not me. So let me bounce one out of here. <laughs> it said that's all, it's all about slow, steady, excellent quality work, flexible relationships, realistic outlooks, preparation, organization, proving yourself over the long period. <laughs> Look, I think. If we had more notary trainers and mentors that understood this and taught this, title companies and signing companies and the lenders would not be going through the pain of of constantly getting documents redone that they're going through. I really do believe that. A small token appreciation. Thank you, man. I greatly appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate that. And see, I know I don't ask for this stuff because look, y'all know how YouTube work. And if you want to, you do. You don't, you don't. Just like on the videos that y'all see on the replay has a super thanks. If you want to, cool. If you don't, I'm not, I made up my mind long ago. My money is going to be based on me out here working, not how much I can guilt trip people into. And that's what a lot of these folk do. They guilt trip folk into giving them money, but they never give them anything solid. And I'd rather just give you solid. And if you you bless me, cool. If you don't, I'm still going to be blessed. And I don't get offended when people don't do anything for me. I get offended (laughs) when people get mad at me for trying to help y'all. And that's all this is. Is that I used to work in the community services, and one of the hottest topics a few years ago was Uber and Lyft. That, that, yeah, and the taxi companies were furious, refused to change with the times. That is correct. So we just have to be willing to adjust. I'm hoping that I never have to talk about this subject again, 
But I guarantee you, there's some folk fuming right now. They mad and they and they probably plotting and planning against me. They probably telling signing companies not to <laughs> mess with me or what have you. One way or the other, I'm gonna always find a way to make money to take care of my family. That's just the way it is. So I'm not worried about it. But if you want a good notary, the people who are here with the party people that's in, we we solid. We gonna help you. We gonna do right title companies, signing companies, lenders. And if you want, and if you, and I've always said this, if you got a notary out there who's struggling, signing company or title company, and they need help, send them my way. I will be more than happy to help them and get them on the right path because I know some of you got notaries that you believe in and they just need a little more help. I will be more than willing to help them out. Just send them my way and I got them covered. And everything said, and blame them for ruining everything. You have to adapt. That is correct. Yep, Greg's book that will educate. That is correct. Yeah, that's he has a real good book. That is a good book to start off with. And see, the main thing is this. <clears throat> you, and I know I said I was going again. You have to be willing to take in information and then figure out what to use where you're at. Bill is in Washington State. There's people in Texas, there's people in California, there's people in New Jersey, there's people all over, and everybody has a perspective. And that perspective is based off of where they're at. Some of the stuff that you hear, you can use where you're at. A lot of it, you probably can't. Or you might not be able to use it yet. But you take the information in, you do your research and find out what is applicable, where you're at for the time you're in implement that and do great with it and then move to the next the problem is that people get all this information and they're trying to be excellent and implement every single thing without vetting it and making sure that it actually is applicable and pertinent to where they are where they are at at this particular time physically for the state and the county you're in mentally and financially and you can't just implement everything that everybody says because you'll get confused and you'll end up stuck. <laughs> um, that gonna oh, it's in my room. It's in the room. But Bill Soroka got a whole bunch of books, and um, the internet has them. Um, look, if you search for him on Amazon, um, you can find um the books. Um. Here it is. Let me pull it up for you. Um, here you go. Got these here. I'll drop the link to it. In the, um, let me drop the link to that for y'all real quick. Where my links at? Where is... Oh, man. Let me see. Any other questions, concerns, ideas, Thoughts, um, what you got for me, people? How y'all doing in the business? Um, how you coming along? Um, what's this one? Here it is. Here's the right link. It shows everything. All right. There you go. And that should take y'all to a page that has everything on there, all these different books, and probably some other stuff in there. Um, it might not be his, but y'all will see it. All right. So if nothing else, look, hope y'all continue to have a great holiday. Again, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for hitting the like button, all of that good stuff. Um, really, really, really appreciate it. And said lost connection. Uh oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, 
Hold on. Make sure I'm still popping. Okay. Yep. I was. I, I'm back. All right. So y'all have a good one. Enjoy yourself as always. If you need me, y'all know how to reach me. Um, and I'll be more than happy to do what I can to help you. That's all there is to it, people. So I appreciate y'all as always. Um, y'all keep it going. Again, thanks for the super chat. And y'all have a great, great evening. Get some rest, which is what I got to do. <laughs> but I got to print these documents for tomorrow first. And then I'll be going to bed. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.